Hello everyone. My name is Vaibhav Karve. I'm a graduate student at the Department of Mathematics at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And I'll be talking about model theory in Lean. All of the code for this project that I'll be referencing today can be found at this public repository on GitHub. Link is included here. I'm also currently on the job market for postdocs. I'll be laying out the context for this talk. I'll tell you the project goals, and then I'll go into a bit of what model theory really is and how we implemented languages, structures, and terms in Lean. Uh, the best case scenario, like my hope for this talk would be that I will get through the whole thing without requiring any prerequisite knowledge of model theory. So for any viewers who are not familiar with model theory, don't worry about it. To lay out the context, uh, this was our team. We were working as part of the Illinois Geometry Lab at the Department of Mathematics. Uh, and this project spanned all of the fall semester. We had one faculty mentor, Philip Heronomy. He is, uh, he was our uh, team expert on model theory and O minimality. We were three graduate students, myself included, and six undergrads working on this project. Uh, one of us had previous experience in Lean. Some of us had uh, some previous knowledge of model theory, and most of us either knew neither model theory nor uh, lean and had to learn both of those from scratch. The logistics, given that this was pandemic time, was that mostly we used Zoom uh, to share our uh, screens and share code and all the code was hosted on GitHub at the aforementioned repository. The goals of the project were to formalize some model theory in Lean and then get to uh, formalize O minimality. Model theory has been done. Uh, we succeeded in doing that. And given that this is still a work in progress, O minimality is something that we hope to get to in the coming semester. Previous work that I must mention that has happened in this direction is that is first with the fly pitch project. Uh, which defined some of the term, some of the uh, first order logic things in Lean. Uh, in particular, they defined terms using something called tree terms. Uh, I, I'll get more in details about what terms are, but uh, it is worth mentioning that their approach was different from the approach that we ultimately ended up taking. Uh, there is also another project by Reed Barton and Johan Camelin where uh, they are uh, they they have started formalizing o minimality in lean uh, again this project is slightly different from the one we have because they formalize o minimality without getting into all the model theory stuff our primary references for this were david marker's model theory book and lauwend and rice's uh, mathematical logic lecture notes so what is model theory? Well, simply put, model theory is the study of mathematical structures where we look at these structures sort of after stripping away uh, the semantics of what the structures mean and just looking at the syntax. Uh, and then we try to make general claims about these structures and their interpretations, uh, their models, uh, and statements that hold might hold within a model based on just the syntactic structure of that theory. All our code can be found in this file model.lean. So it starts out fairly standard. And here's a list of all the things that we have defined in this file. And we start with defining languages first. So a language is a set of functions 
each with a fixed arity. Let me move the screen. So a language is a set of functions and a set of relations and each function has a fixed arity or the number of arguments that it accepts is fixed and each relation has a fixed arity. So in other words, a language can just be thought of a bunch of verbs and a bunch of prepositions. As an example, the language of groups has these three things. It has a unit, an inverse operation, and a group product or group operation. So the unit is just a function of arity zero. The inverse is just a function of arity one. And the product is just a function of arity two. And it has no relations whatsoever. How would we implement this in lean? So here's the definition of a language. So lang is a structure with functions and relations. For every natural number, which is the arity of the function and relation, we get a particular type. For example, the language of groups is defined as such. So the functions are given as there are uh, there's one zero arity function. There's one unary function, which is the inverse operation. And there's one binary function, else empty, meaning there's nothing else in the structure. So we've defined a language with verbs and prepositions. Next would be a structure on that language. What that means is an interpretation for these functions and these relations. So this starts giving it some sort of semantics. For example, a group as defined in Mathlib is already a structure on the language of groups. So here's, an, here's a short definition for group is struck of group lang. So let A be a group. This is the group that is defined in Mathlib then it is a structure on the group lang that we defined. And here are all the things, here are all the interpretations that are needed to make group a structure on the language of groups. Similarly, we defined embeddings and isomorphisms of these L structures. But after this fun stuff is when we encountered our first uh, sort of big problem which was in defining terms. So how are terms defined? A term is, it has an inductive definition. So there is the understanding that constants are terms, variables are terms, whatever. Think, I, I, won't, I won't go into exact details of what constants and variables are, but they're exactly what one might think they are. So constant constants of our language are terms, and we have some way of make, having variables in our language that can then be replaced with other terms, so variables are terms. And here's the fun part, a function of arity n applied to n other terms is a term. So this is what makes the thing inductive. It is sort of also self-referential, right? So terms are functions applied to the correct number of arguments. And as I said, this is where we started running into some sort of uh, issues that were not very obvious to us when uh, we started out. And Zulip was very helpful in uh, guiding us wherever we needed some help. And we asked a lot of questions and a lot of people uh, jumped in and helped us sort out some of these issues, but it took us some time to figure out uh, how to encode this definition into Lean. And I can show you some of the problems that we faced. So our first attempt here was to say, well, a term is just this con constructor which takes in a constant, gives us a term. Var, which takes in a natural number, gives us a term. And application of a function having arity n to a vector of terms, sorry, to a vector of terms. And this itself should be a term. This looks fine, but Lean is not happy with us. Lean gives us an error saying, you can't use nested inductive type. This here with the vector of terms is the nested inductive type. So we can't use 
term as a nested thing in its own definition. All right, so we need to need a way to do this without using vectors. Well, what are vectors? Vectors are sort of isomorphic to uh, fin n, so a map from fin n to term. So we redefined this. The only change here has been this v instead of vector term is now a map from fin n to term. So this essentially maps the integers from zero to n minus one to a term, right? So we have the correct number of terms here. This still gives us an error because lean, uh, well, this, this still gives us an issue, I should say, because lean accepts this uh, definition, but it is still tricky to work with because of the fin, because now we need to work with fin types. Uh, our third attempt was to try and get this, we said, you know, forget about fin, forget about vectors, maybe we'll just turn it into a list, right? And then there's no issue in uh, with the length of this thing. Well, again, this has a, a couple of uh, problems with it. Firstly, this is too general, right? Now this allows non-terms to be terms because you can take a function, which is a binary function, for example, and apply it to more than two arguments. You could apply it to three, five, or well, an infinite list of arguments. And that is not very nice. We don't want to allow that. Uh, also, once you do make a definition like this, where term itself has a list of term in there, then any function that accepts term L now needs to have two parts to it. It needs to be formatted as a mutually recursive definition. One part that is defined on term L itself and one part that is defined on list of terms. And so we, we need to carry around this mutually recursive uh, definition for every single thing that we define on term L, uh, which is uh, not very nice and not very convenient to work with. It, it makes the logic of all the definitions a lot harder to work with. Uh, our final attempt and the thing that ultimately ended up working and making Lean happy was some sort of, a, so it, it, was, it was a definition of term that not only took the language in, but also took this extra natural number or integer. And what we ended up doing was we ended up defining different levels of terms. So a term is not just a constant and a variable anymore, but we have terms of level zero, terms of level one, terms of level two, and an infinite hierarchy of terms. So let me read this off line by line. A constant is just a term of level zero. A variable is also a term of level zero. A function of arity n becomes a term term of arity uh, of level n and apl applying so app is now the application of a term of level n plus one to a term of level zero to give a reduced level of term so somehow we have this extra parameter of zero zero n n plus one sort of that we have to carry around just to disambiguate what level we are talking about and this fixes the problem because we can start with a term of level n, add another, like apply it to a term of level zero and get a term of level n minus one. So this is sort of like partial application of function one argument at a time. Uh, so this definition is very different from the definition given in the textbook, right? Because we have introduced this whole notion of the level of a term. Uh, but at least it makes Lean happy. And now it is sort of up to us to show that this is in fact equivalent to the definition given in the book. Uh, also, I, I also want to mention that I will be uh, very grateful for any feedback if anyone uh, has any feedback for us on this problem, because we'll be happy to learn of any alternate approaches to solving this. Figuring out each of these approaches and sort of settling on the thing that works appropriately it took us a long time. Uh, and it was, it, we learned a lot in the process. 
So we will be happy to hear more if anyone has anything to say on this issue. Once we had that in place, the, the journey after that was a lot smoother. Uh, here's a list of things that we have already uh, defined and put in uh, our model.clean file. So we defined term interpretation, formulae, and sentences. So we started off with just simple verbs and prepositions. And now we have formulae and sentences uh, that we can write in this language and in this structure. Uh, we defined a notion for which formulae are modeled in a given structure. We proved some theorems. We showed that variable assignments don't affect an interpretation. And variable assignments don't affect uh, the modeling in a formula uh, of a formula in a structure. This is something that is yet to be uh, completed, the proof is still sort of in the work. We defined models, which are just set of axioms or formulae that are modeled by a variable assignment. Uh, one, one structure and one language that model theorists really care about uh, is the discrete linear order uh, structure. This is a particular model of interest. So we, we, we did end up defining that and we ended up showing that the rational numbers, in fact, are a model of this discrete linear order, and they satisfy all the axioms for this structure. Uh, future plans, as I mentioned, would be uh, to continue this project. So this is still a work in progress. We are going to continue with pretty much the same team in spring 2021. Uh, and hopefully, we'll have some new developments in the next few months to report back. Uh, and now we have a trained team. So even though we started with almost zero knowledge of uh, lean, now we have a trained team of three graduate students and six undergrads who will be working on this. We hope to get to define uh, definability of sets and O minimality in lean. So Hopefully that is something that will be upcoming in uh, spring 2021. And finally, I can be reached at this email address and I'll also be available on uh, Zulib as well as during the social hour in case anyone wants to chat. Thank you for listening.